Pretty good. Tell me, listen, how long have you been playing the banjo? Well, you're getting close on to 55 years, I guess, Irvin. Pretty much straight through? Have you kept it up? or? No, there was a period in my life to where I had given it up, I guess. And uh, back in those days, it's hard to get a hold of a banjo. And uh, the first banjo I ever had, I made it myself, made it out of a cigar box. Taken, tore up one of the dad's window screens to get some strings. How did you start? Whom did you hear first? Well, I had a cousin back there in North Carolina who was a pretty good banjo player. And he learned me the first tune that I ever played, which is that very familiar tune that so many have started out on, a tune called Ellen Smith. How did you play it? What style did you first use? Just one finger. How was that? in there as well as just a picking of the note. Do you get that by brushing backwards or forwards? Down. Down. Then a little later on, after we came west to Oklahoma, I, then I ran on to a, a boy there. It so happened that he was from North Carolina, too. But he used two fingers, a thumb and, and his first finger, in the same tune. Managed 100 years old, anyhow, <clears throat> at least that much. Oh, there's so many of those old backwoodsmen that played that old style then. But to many of them, <clears throat> you have the most original style, I think, that there is. It's the frailing like you frail. Show us one of the two well, ways you frail it. Comes out sounding differently. I found that, in a way, it's easier to play this way than. This two-finger style that you use with your thumb on the fifth string all the time. But that's a very difficult style to learn. You find very few that, can, that have conquered that, that plays it well. Well, we're sort of rummaging around the bottom of the mountain. We haven't conquered it yet. Yeah. But thanks to you and some of your other friends from North Carolina who are good enough to show me some things. Yes, we do a very good job. Virginia banjo playing and Tennessee playing different? Yes, some of it is. Even the older style? Yes. So instead of the way you were playing with hitting your four strings with the index finger and keeping your thumb on the fifth string, did they play it differently? Did you see people who used two fingers but did it in a different yes. way? That's really a forerunner of our, our three-finger picking nowadays that, that has been, uh, of which Scruggs uh, really uh, brought out and per perfect. But then, uh, in latter years, when I was about 16, well, then there was quite a demand down south for playing for dances. And there's an old fiddler that I played with. Well, all his finger picking wasn't any good. So he learned me a C chord. That is all I knew, just a C chord. But later, later years, though, I got to practice on that style of picking and I found out that I could play the melody, too, on pieces that I knew. And where I was playing with the fiddler, 
you know, I'd chord along with him. If a tune that I knew, I, then I would play the melody along with him, like, uh, well, an old familiar one coming around the mountain. <laughs> take solo breaks or did the fiddle play all the time and you simply backed up? Well, back in those days, I, I just backed up all together. It's all I knew. I remember the, playing with an old fiddler one night for a dance and there's some fella come up from some town down there and he said to the old fiddler, he said, well, he said, I'll relieve you and uh, play a tune or two. He said, down he turned to me, he said, can you play an E flat? I said, oh yeah. So <laughs> I waited till he got kicked off. In E flat, and I just cut down an old C chord right in after him, so I made it really sounded good. <laughs> he didn't complain, though. No, it's all I knew, this C chord. Well, what else changed? What did you add to your playing styles? Well, in the latter years, I've tried to pick up the three-finger scrug style, which is, I started out too late in life. And in those things, it's about like a chicken with long feathers on its feet trying to walk in gumbo mud. <laughs> it doesn't, yeah. I... I've tried it myself, and it feels that way. Yeah, you've done a pretty good job of it. Well, now this thing that I was doing in frailing style is about as old as the two-finger picking. Yeah. But did it come from the same place? Did people in North Carolina, the region of North Carolina from which you came, also frail the banjo with their thumb on the inside strings, as I did? <coughs> no, this was a... I remember of uh, hearing someone remark that people south of the Blue Ridge frail the banjo over there. They, they, they call it a double shuffle. Where did you get that from? It's a, it's a, it's a farm of frailing. So I think. tunes in first position from the fifth fret down to the nut. Is old-time banjo noted for work up on the neck? Did you ever do much of that? I used to wonder why all the rest of these frets was put on here. I thought it was a waste of material. <laughs> Never come down below that fifth fret. So then you had to retune the banjo to get different keys yes. instead of playing on the neck. Mm -hmm. Well, how about doing something in another tuning? Well, it, I do very little. It, uh, of course, in some of the frailing tunes, they, they run this to... Uh, that key up to there, that string up to that note, of which I won't do, but the, the way I had to tune in, we call it C notation. Now, this is an open G chord. This That's the reason why these extra pegs are on here. A lot of them use those, uh, which I have never conquered. But mostly in bluegrass playing. That throws it... That throws it into an open D. I figure it would do well to stay with my old two-finger picking. It. What other songs were favorites then? Another song? Yes, what did you like to play? What was fun?
cartoon you do a bit on, Johnson Boys. Which I learned from Mr. Vinoy from North Carolina. Yes. But did he pick that style up? No, he frailed it like you do. 